Today we're talking about negative angles and how to use them in calculations. Now there's a few ways of understanding negative angles and I will show you uh, some of them. But let's start with the cast diagram as you know it. Cast. There we go. So this is 0, 90, 180, 270 and 0 is and also 360. Okay, so normally if we have a theta, we would indicate it with an angle. But now we have an angle called negative theta. So let's say for instance, that is our angle. That is theta, the magnitude. So, and it can be expressed in terms of a sine, for instance. Uh, let's say this is the question, sine, negative theta. I want you to understand that this would also be equal to sine, zero, minus theta. Which we will interpret as the fourth quadrant. It's also the same as saying sine, 360, minus theta. All of them are the same thing. It's just different ways of writing it. So my question to you is, in the fourth quadrant, where is 360 minus theta? What is sine? You will notice that sine is negative. And this is the first um, part of the negative angle. Uh, just expressed in terms of sine. We'll quickly do it in, with cos theta and tan theta as well. Okay, so with cos theta, cos negative theta, we can say that it's the same as 0 minus theta. You don't have to show this step, by the way. You don't have to show any of this. We know it's the same as cos 360 minus theta. And in the fourth quadrant, we know this will be positive. Cos theta. Now for tan negative theta. Again, just taking you through the, the steps. It's the same as 0 minus theta. It's the same as 360 minus theta. And we know by looking at our cast diagram that tan is negative there. So this will be negative tan theta. So in summary, sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta. Cos of negative theta equals cos theta. Tan of negative theta equals negative tan theta. The second way to remember this is by looking at the, it's the sine graph, cos graph, and tan graph. So let's first look at the sine graph. Um, and you will see there that sine theta is asymmetrical. So whatever, let's assume this distance is um, sine of is a theta. That means this will be negative theta. We'll have the exact same value in the negative on the other side. Or even if we go from here, any angle, you can take any angle, but the principle here is that this is an asymmetrical graph. So whatever you have on the one side, it will not be the same on the other side. It will be the negative value of that. So based on this, we can uh, make this exact same conclusion. Now if we will look at the cos graph, it looks like this. It's a mirror image around the y-axis. So a cos graph 
is symmetrical. So whatever the value on the one side, so let's say for cos negative theta will be there, it will be the exact same value on the other side. In other words, cos negative theta is the same as cos theta. Now we can do the same thing with a tan graph. So for a tan graph, you will notice that it's also asymmetrical like the sine graph. So whatever the value is on the one side, it will be minus one times that value on the other side of the y-axis. So based on this, this graph, we can see this pattern just like we saw with the sine graph. Let's look at how to apply this in calculations. So we are going to look at this example for cos negative 60, just to show you a principle in calculation. Okay. Now, we can either, well with cos it's the easiest because uh, we know that cos negative theta is equal to cos theta. But there's one of two ways to look at this. So one is to say, okay, I remember that cos negative theta is equal to cos theta. And I can write my expression down, uh, knowing that it will then be the same as cos 60. And by using my special angles, I know cos 60 is equal to a half. That's the one way. The other way is, and this is especially if you get stuck. If you're at a place that you get stuck and you're like, ah, oh, I can't remember the rules, anything like that. The only thing you need to remember is the following. These angles go in circles. Okay? So every 360 degrees will be back at the origin. Uh, I mean at the start at zero. And it will repeat itself, doesn't matter how many times you go around. Okay? So in other words, if you are somewhere like for instance at negative 60 and you don't know what to do all that you need to do is to say okay i can add 360 to that value and it will have the same answer so this is where if you're stuck if you don't know what to do you're a bit stressed or whatever you blank in the test all you need to do then is to say okay i am going to say negative 60 plus 360 and if I do that it will become cos 300 right and now we apply the exact same way like we've always been doing so okay what's the closest to 300 is it 360 180 90 it is 360 so we can express cos 300 as 360 minus 60 and then we know this is the fourth quadrant and cos is positive in the fourth quadrant, so this is the same as cos 60, which is equal to a half. And again, this takes longer, but this is if you get stuck. Then you can follow this route. We are going to look at another example just now. We are going to look at sine negative 30. Now, sine negative 30. Um, let's see, if you remember your rule, you know, okay, sine negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. So you can say, okay, this will be equal to minus sine 30, and that means minus a half, because sine 30 is a half, and that's your final answer, right? And that's why it pays off to know your work, right? Um, but let's say, again, you're stuck. You don't know what to do, you understand that you can add 360 and it will have the same value. So now we are going to say, well, this is the same as sine negative 30 plus 360, so it will be 330. It has the same value. 
then we know 360 is the closest and that means I can say 360 minus 30 is 330 and it's negative in that quadrant so it's minus sine 30 which is minus a half and that's an easy way to explain this and to understand this work. Okay, we are going to look at another example, one last one. It will be a little bit more complex, and I want you to pay careful attention to what I'm going to do now. So the question just clearly asks us to simplify this expression, and you will notice we are going to apply our rules with the negative angles with... Um, one to three of the four uh, expressions. Okay. So first one, cos 90 minus x. We know that's a reduction formula around 90. So we can immediately write down this one as sine x. Now let's look at cos negative x. We know, as previously explained, uh, we can apply the rule. This one which says cos negative theta is cos theta. You understand it's symmetrical. So cos negative theta will just become cos of x will just become cos x. Now we need to be very careful of this particular one. It says tan x minus 360. If you're in a hurry, you will, will be tempted to say, okay, it's the fourth quadrant. We're going to work with that. But you can clearly see these two are swapped around. And as previously mentioned in a previous video, you have to make sure the numerical value is first. You know, the 360, 180, which one you're going to use. So the first thing we need to do is we need to factorize by taking out a negative in order for this one to be in the correct order. So now it is a 360 minus x, but we have that negative to sort out first. And uh, we, we have to do the same at the uh, denominator. So it's going to be sine bracket minus bracket 180 plus x. Okay, so the next step, sine x times cos x. Let's look at this one. So it will be tan of a negative angle. That whole internal bracket right there. That whole thing is the angle. So this becomes minus tan 360 minus x. And the same for the denominator. That negative can be applied exactly uh, as we did previously with our, our rules. Okay, now we can take this one further. So next step, to use the reduction formula to complete this. Um, so we still have a negative tan there, but if we say tan 360 minus x, Remember your cost diagram is the fourth quadrant. It's a negative there. So it will be a negative times minus tan x. Now I'm going to write it down so that you can keep track of what has happened. But this will become a positive. And for sine 180 plus, it is also in this in the third quadrant it is negative there, so this will be a minus bracket minus sine x, which will become a positive as well. Okay, so that that becomes a plus a positive tan x. Remember, it's still multiplication; it's just one single term. This becomes a sine x. The sine x is cancelled out, so what you will have left is cos x times tan x. You use your um, quotient identity 
to change uh, your Tanix to Sinix and with Kha'Zix, they cancel out. Final answer, sine x.